G'day, I'm Luke from Drifter, and we're down here in uh, the local Gloucester Caravan Park, uh, which is right on the Gloucester River. Beautiful little place, and this is a caravan park you can camp in any time of the year. It's just a wonderful place, there's so much room. And again, right in town, it's literally two, 300 metres from town, so you can walk into town, and uh, right on the banks of the beautiful Gloucester River. So, yeah, we just come down here today to do a video on the new trailer. It's a walk-up hardtop trailer that we've recently designed and just released. And what I wanted to do today was a spec sheet video. So, you know, we're gonna, we've got the spec sheet here, and Jake has put it up on the web, so it's on the web now. All the uh, inclusions are listed. And I wanted just to walk you through those, uh, the spec sheet and uh, explain it all to you. Now with the price on any product, like these sort of trailers, the prices all depend on what's included, you know, and what's not included. Um, at the moment we're saying it's $40,000 for this trailer. Um, that's as the price of today, uh, end of May. Now the price may change, of course, on a video in a few years' time, but that's the price that is today um, and on the website. Now we might have to tw tweak that a little bit and sometimes tweaking a price might involve leaving the price as it is but including or taking out some extras um, that's included in the trailer. But for the moment I'm going to go through with you and show you what is included for that price and, uh, and what's not included. There's a couple of things there that are going to be extras. So that's what we're doing today. Um, as always when me and Jake come down here to film a video the wind picks up and blows its head off. So anyway, hope it all goes good. So what we might do is uh, start through the spec sheet and I'll basically go through line by line. Uh, we've got the spec sheet on the website listed up as um, you know trying to group it together in different items, different sections to make it easy to understand. So I'll go through that. The first part is underneath trailer and the running gear and that includes the uh, Cruise Master independent suspension, 12 inch uh, electric brakes, the stabilizers, the Japanese bearings, trailer body, a few things like that. So what we might do is jump underneath and we'll go through those. Righto, so here you can see the um, Cruise Master Outback XT independent suspension with dual shocks. They're, um, the, the tear on this trailer at the moment is about 11.50, so that's the weight as it is with all your kitchen and everything in there as we sell it and the GTM on the trailer is 1700 so you've got plenty of capacity for gear well more than you know um, you really need uh, about 1700 kilo rating airbag shocks uh, airbag suspension sorry um, you've got the 12 inch electric brakes okay so plenty of stopping power and uh, we've got the two rear alco stabilizers on the back Japanese pa made parallel bearings, a trailer body etch primed, sticker seam, se seam sealed, is all up underneath here. You can see the black, um, you know, uh, um, Raptor lining. So what we do with the trailer is we'll, we'll uh, seam seal it and etch prime it first and then we'll do a, a two pack rhino lining underneath, which means that there's no little cracks or gaps between welds, um, between the joins of the sheet and the chassis where water and mud and dirt can get stuck. So it's fully seam sealed. So when you wash it down, you can get a full clean trailer underneath. It's quite important that you don't have places where mud and dirt can get stuck. Um, all Supergal Australian steel. We've got the rear dot mud flaps, which are the ones on the stone guard and the underneath mud flaps as well. These two mud flaps we've had for about a year now and that basically stops the rocks coming through and damaging things underneath. Um, the twin uh, water tanks, we've got two water tanks now on the independent and uh, we've made them on aluminium for the moment, they will be plastic shortly, their plastic is you know, better than the aluminium but they, they will be plastic and we can swap those out shortly. But we've got twin tanks, they're 80 litres, they're plumbed separately and uh, you, know, you can use one for shower water and one for washing up water, something like that. So that's basically the spec sheet of underneath the trailer. Here you can also see the uh, Alco um, rear stabilizers, so we'll put those down when we set it up. All right, let's come up to the front here. And again, working through the spec sheet, we've got the two meter long triple drawbar. The triple drawbar means the sec central section here. 
which we use to attach the stone guard and help with the toolbox and things like that. Uh, 100 by 50, draw bar 2 metres long. Cruise Master DA35 hitch, these are standard now, they're really good hitch. Um, very high quality, the easiest to use. Made in Australia, they're really good hitch. Stone guard on the front, pretty standard. Really important on trailers to get those stones to stop damaging your trailer and also bouncing back. So, you know, it's, it mightn't look the best, but they function the best of anything. A lot of trailers, outback trailers, just are really missing a good stone guard. And, um, you know, it's a quite an important part of it. Largest jockey wheel. You can see the two have got the new Max Trax Mini. That's used as a jack plate. And, you know, by the time you wind your jockey wheel all the way down, it's not, it's not bad to use that, you know, like I've done. I'm storing the Mini on top of my boxes here, so it's easy. And, you know, pretty handy. Now, the Mini Max Trax is not included. It's not on the spec sheet. But it's pretty handy to use like that. Rubbish bag in the front. It's really good. Okay, travelling, whatever. It's always good to be able to chuck a beer bottle or, you know, whatever in the rubbish so that's really handy there got um, eyelets on the bottom so you can hose it out you know because they get a bit dirty marine there's a marine carpet ply step inside here so that's your step underneath here the box is sitting on and also we've extended it now so the gas bottle fits on the front there as well we've done that so it's close to the joker uh, high tensile rated safety chains um, these are 8 mil and they're high tensile rated chains. Some people have been talking about those whether it should be high tensile or not. That's what we're required to use so that's what we do. You can also see it's reinforced here as well. Um, very important as well that this chain is not on the bottom but up top here. So you can see how nicely that's reinforced and welded up out of the way. Uh, Diamond T toolbox. This is a large toolbox now so we've gone higher um, to fit the joker. So that's that there. So it's got a side door access, you know. That's a custom box. They're not cheap to make. They're Australian made. They're the best quality box you can buy. Um, so that's sitting there. Max tracks included on the front here. So a twin pair of Max tracks. You can get any colour you like. Uh, three mil checker plate wood box, which is this box here. So it's always been a wood box. You can carry jerry cans. And now we've got the Cruise Master suspension in there as well. That's the independent. Okay, so what we've got inside there is the, uh, the pump and the air tank and the, the controls for the Cruise Master suspension. These are a parallel bearing um, on, on the 12 inch electric brakes and uh, you know, independent suspension. You've got uh, several advantages of that where you can have adjustability in your ride. So if you're heading out to camp, you're going to be a lot heavier than when you're coming back and you can adjust your ride. Um, you can also raise and lower the trailer to suit where you're camping for your kitchen. If your kitchen's a bit low or a bit high, you can adjust it. As you can see here, we're on uneven ground, so we can um, adjust that shortly to set up camp. And uh, we've also got an air tank, and we've got an air outlet. So I've got a hose there, and qu quite handy if you're out back travelling. You're going to have uh, bull dust all over the back of your truck, and also your trailer, and you can just literally blow it all down and uh, that's a really handy feature that we've got. So sort of not much point having a compressor without a tank and we've got an air tank on there, 10 litres which is great, you can use pump your tyres up, whatever. Alright so look at the electrics now. Come standard with, let's have a look in the toolbox, twin uh, come standard with twin batteries and uh, they're located in the front toolbox here so 100 and, uh, 120 amp hour GVM batteries. Now what I've done in here there's normally another battery under here and the second battery is here. On this one we've gone to lithium so this is not standard lithium standard with two AGM 120 amp hour batteries. So the lithium battery adds I can't remember around 1000 1400 I have to check that price but what the lithium gives you is, is uh, about 13 kilos as opposed to 50, 60 kilos, so way less weight on your drawbar. And it's uh, a 125 amp hour battery, and that's the equivalent of really 200 amp hours in an AGM battery. So you're saving a lot of weight. You only have one battery, which gives you more space in the front here, and it'll charge a lot quicker as well. So it'll accept charge way quicker than a standard battery, so you can charge it up much faster. So really one of these 125 amp hour lithiums is equivalent of two 
and you're saving weight and just much better capability. So we've got the option of the lithium if you want it. We've got the uh, Red Arc BMS in there, okay, which is situated here. And we've also got the new TVMS system, which is situated here. That's a control box for the TVMS. And basically what that means is all the switching is running through a central point. And you can use the app on your phone or the control at the back to switch everything on and off. The pump, the compressor, everything can be switched uh, from a central point at the back. So new technology, TVMS is Total Vehicle Management System. I think that's what it stands for. And uh, we're going to put that on the trail as a standard. What I'm thinking of doing is, um, yeah, the, the, the BMS is, comes included as standard, but the TVMS section is, is an extra part. It's an extra about $600. Um, I'm going to include that in the package basically as a bonus for the moment anyway. So if you buy one of these trails, we'll say instead of charging 600 bucks for the TVMS, we'll chuck it in for free basically. That's a bit of a deal at the moment. The uh, 700 watt pure sine wave Red Arc inverter, such good quality stuff Red Arc. And that's situated there, that's not included. It's on the spec sheet, you can buy that. Some people want a 300, 700, 1200, whatever. So, you know, you can choose whichever inverter you want if you did want one, but that doesn't come included. All right, get back to my little spec sheet. So the batteries, Red Arc BMS, Anderson plug hardwired to the battery. That's this one here. So when you're, when you're driving along, of course you're charging your battery from your vehicle. Uh, front clearance lights, that's these things here. All right, what I've done is, um, we've just taped them up, right? But they are a clearance light, and then the biggest pain in the ass ever because it's very bright shining in your mirrors all the time at night but we're required to put those on so um, you know I really wish we didn't have to because it's a pain wiring them up and they're so bright but just if you want to do what I've done and put a bit of black tape over them um, I think New South Wales is not required West Australia and other, other states it is required and if it's not on there it's a lot of work putting it on and we've been we fall into that trap a few times so they're just standard but if you don't like them just cover them up it's pretty silly we've got to put them on, but that's the way. Uh, entertainment panel, we'll look at a sec. There's a light in the toolbox right here. And the TVMS is off, is off but that's the light there. Uh, the fuse box kill switch actually is, um, is now covered by the, the TVMS. If you get the TVMS, that covers all your fuses. And uh, it's all electronic now, so there won't be a fuse box kill switch in there if you've selected the TVMS and at the moment we're including that for free so uh, seven pin flat is pretty much standard on the front okay seven pin flat plug and if you have a different plug large round or around then let us know and we'll put that on for you the tail lights number plate light and the three work lights are these here All right, there's one on this side shining towards your ensuite and two on the back as well now we've made this so you can spin it around, all right, which is pretty good. So, and, and also on the front. So you can shine that at the front of the back, pull up a camp, you've got some immediate nice spotlights, very bright, and there's three of those around the place. Okay, wheels and tyres. So, 2x16x8 by by alloy CSA Raptor rim. So it comes with an alloy, Australian made company, CSA. Um, and, uh, the standard is a uh, yeah, 16 inch rim. You can go 17 inch rim, same price. If you go to a 17 inch tyre, it costs a bit more. 17 inch tyres cost more than 16 inch tyres. That's the extra couple hundred bucks. You can get 17s if you like. You really don't want to go more than 17 on a trailer like this. Uh, on the spare, it's going to be a black steel spare rim. You don't need a nice alloy rim as your spare. So we're using 265, 75. Uh, 16 brand new tyres, three of those the same, they're like a mud terrain or an extra mud terrain. The, the, you don't need a mud terrain on your trailer, okay at all. The, the, the tyre has no power on the wheels of course, but the mud terrain tyres and the extra mud tyres which we're using just have a stronger sidewall. So that's the only reason, you've got thicker tread, stronger sidewall, they are less prone to puncturing and that's why we're using there. And also it looks pretty cool, you know, you need that as well. Uh, the offsets, we're doing a standard offset. It's a P25 six stud and uh, we can change that offset and the stud pattern to suit, not all vehicles, but it's, it's quite difficult and we're going to have a standard offset 
And if you want a different offset, it's going to be a little bit extra money because it's a custom order and a custom build for, for the uh, suspension. And uh, we can do that if you need it. And the drifter wheel cover. All right, so trailer body. It's basically a six foot trailer. Okay, so it's 1800 by 1200 internal. So this is built on a six foot trailer. Uh, the standard is a Hamatone silver paint. All right, so it's all that's prime, fully seam sealed, and uh, silver paint. We can do the silver or the green standard, and then there's other colours available. We've got a cobalt colour, like Tofty's Trail is like a dark grey, and there is a few other colours available. So um, if you wanted to pick your own colour, we can match sort of a vehicle, or pretty much match a vehicle with a two-pack uh, enamel, but it does cost more, okay? The, you know, the two-pack is, um, is very hard wearing, easy paint, very easy to touch up. A two-pack enamel like a car paint is very expensive, so it's a bit more if we've got a colour match and also we've got to buy special paint, you know, it's a lot more expensive. So we can match if you like. It's extra money though. So the, uh, yeah, the three mil checker plate aluminium top is this piece here. So the top of the trailer, of course, got a flat deck all the way through. Three mil checker plate on a frame. The Diamond T medium canopy. The, this trailer is coming with a medium height canopy. The, the small canopy is about here, so it gives you that little bit extra height which is great for when you're opening your side doors. Just gets that above your head a little bit more. Okay, you can select this with the small canopy, if you like, um, but standard is the medium canopy. 1300 by 1300 by, what's that? 600 height, okay? Heaps of room in there, lots of room for all your gear. A top frame to support awning and rooftop tent. That's this one here, okay? So 40 by 40. Supports the uh, rooftop tent over the top of the canopy. Tailgate fully sealed, dustproof, over some latches. That's this one here. Okay, heavy duty, you know, tailgate. Two guard mounted side boxes, Diamond T. That's this one here. Okay. And uh, again, made by Diamond T in Brisbane. Very high quality. Great uh, mud guard box on each side for your pegs and ropes and all those little things. Comes with your own. A dot number, unique dot number, every dot's got its own number. Uh, lockable jerry can holders, there's a jerry can holder on each side of the trailer, just here. You can put a padlock through it if you like, that'll hold any sort of jerry can. Two lockable uh, gas bottle holders, so there's one on the front and there's also one on the rear passenger side, a gas bottle holder. So you've got two gas bottles, one's safe for your kitchen and one's for your shower. Okay, we've got a uh, 12 volt, 10 liter a minute rear mounted electric pump. That's this one here. And that's used for, uh, of course, the shower and um, operates the water of the kitchen. And now you've also got a couple outlets at the back here. One outlet is for the kitchen. One outlet is, this one here is an inlet. So if you want to fill your tanks or pump from the creek, we can run a hose to the creek and this will draw water from another source besides the tank. So underneath there's, there's several, uh, you know, um, on off switches. To, to isolate the tanks, to pump from both or separately. And when you get a trailer like this, you really need to climb underneath and have a bit of a look so you understand where things are. There's some instructions to go with it, but you can pump separately, which is great. So if you did have a jerry can, you know, you can pump from the jerry can into your tank to fill it up that way as well. So there's the pump there. The Joker kit, that's it here. All right, so that's mounted there. That's a temporary mount, not a fixed mount. We can see there it's a, a latch there that this will come straight off and there's a strap to hold it, a bracket on the bottom and a little pin there. So that is not a permanent mount. I think the laws have changed recently in the, and you're not legally not allowed to bolt that on permanently. So that's a temporary mount and you can just easily strap that on there if you wanted to. We've got also here um, all the hoses you can see. It comes with um, you know, a Jilka bracket for your shower. All the hoses here neatly organized on so a little strap. So I can just unclip that and all my hoses are there. All right, so nice and neat up out of the way. And that's the little Jilka box there. Checker plate aluminum treads around the trailer. That's these parts here, okay? Just to, for protection, particularly this one here is for, um, you know, uh, for protection from rocks, it's very, uh, vulnerable place here, the front of the mud guard. So that's we can't paint that because you'll just strip all the paint off it. That's designed to stop the rocks. Checker plate tread. 
We've got the uh, tie down points at the back here. All right, there's a new feature we're using these now, which is great. You can see that these are movable, the aircraft style load rail um, tie down rails, which are really good. And you can tie things on the back. There's a cigarette plug at the back here for more power. Okay, twin socket there, twin, twin cigs. And you've also got a, a rear and a front lockable uh, water filler. So there's two tanks, you can fill them individually. And importantly, you can use, you can have separate water supplies when you're traveling. If you're traveling out back, one's really bore water for showers or whatever, and you've got a fresh water for washing up and drinking if you want. There's the, uh, also a tap on the end here. All right, just for a quick wash your hands, that sort of thing. The uh, Nava LED lights in the back. All right, that's the trailer body. Inside the trailer, let's have a look at that. These um, over center latches are the best way to hold the trailer closed, nice and uh, strong. They are adjustable, so over time that seal will squash a little bit and you can adjust them up. So just, you want to not over tighten, but get them nice and tight. The tailgate's held open with the gas strut, as you can see. And uh, that's so it'll hold it there. Quite heavy this, this tire, and we're on a bit of a slope here. So let's just level this trailer up and um, show you the advantage of having the uh, independent airbag suspension. So I've got a left and a right here, the driver's side, passenger side, and I can just literally drop this down. Now that's basically on the bump stop on this side, and I'll just lift the other side up a little bit. How's that look, Jake? Yep. Yeah, there's two bubble gauges on the front, so you know you can uh, use that to, you know, level up the trailer. All right. So you can see we've basically uh, raised this section probably about 50 mils. Uh, on the um, on the independent suspension between the chassis and the bump stop, there's about there's a recommended height of 75 mils, which is about that far, which is the optimum um, distance for travelling when when you're driving along. So you can literally drop that down 75 mil under the bump stop on one side and you can raise it about 50 mil on the other. So you've got that, you know, about uh, 125 mil variation that you can, you can raise it. As you can see, just about got it leveled up there. <clears throat> I'm just going to take this box off. These boxes are from Box and awesome for tucker for food and um, that's basically a tucker box uh, dust proof waterproof they're so light and just an ideal box that we can load on the back here this is the um, we'll show you this in here so your control panel okay so this is the red arc red vision tvms and uh, you switch it on from here. So what we've got is some settings here, the main control section, and so that's showing two water tanks are full. So that's great that the water tank is shown there, and the battery is showing 100% full. It's shown that the there is some sun, you know, coming in. Not right now. See, it's flickering in and out because one, the batteries are full, are fully charged, and also there's very little sun here at the moment in the shade. Here we've also got it's in a float mode. There's uh, nothing going out and 0.3 amps coming in. Okay, very little coming in because there's no sun. The 0.1 amps here shown is basically half an amp is run on this uh, display itself. So we can see exactly what's there. On this section here we can see um, what's going in. So it uh, records, you can see here, we haven't got anything today. Yesterday we put in 290 watts, trailers in the shade, folded up. And you can go back, scroll through 650 watts last weekend, whatever. So that shows you how much you're putting in. We can show you um, daily um, state of charge per day and state of charge per hour. 
So it gives you a little history, running back, seeing exactly what's happening. Again, you can see what's, um, what's coming in, uh, what's, what's going out, what's coming in. We've got five watts of sun, nothing at the moment, and um, we've produced 31 um, watt hours today. We've got the vo uh, temperature and, and the voltage. So we're sitting at 13.4 volts. That's this area here. Uh, now if we went back, or if we turned the um, radio on, okay here, and some lights, turn all the lights on, now they're not switched on, but the radio is now on, and we'll see drawing 0.7 of an amp, okay, if I turn that radio off there, that'll go back down to, uh, you know, 0.1 or 0. So you can see exactly what, the good thing with this system, you can see exactly what's being used. So you can also see up here is the little LEDs, uh, there's four of those around the trailer. So if I, we're running 1.3 amps at the moment, so we know exactly what's going out of the battery. Okay. And if I turn the lights off here, we can now see a drop back down to 0.6. Okay, so we're basically running about you know, an amp for those four LEDs. And uh, if I turn the radio off, we can see a drop back down. So that's a good thing with the BMS. It shows you exactly what's happening. You can see individually what is using what power. And uh, also, the other day I had the, um, I had the inverter left on and it was just in, it was just on and running. Okay, the inverter's in here. All right, and I just had that on. As you can see, it was on for a couple of days. Doesn't need to be on, I should have had it turned off. But it was on and that's using power. And uh, what I could see here was, you can see that now we're using 1.6 amps just by having the uh, um, front inverter switched in the on position. So it's using power. And if we plug something in, that would go right up as well. So looking at this, I'd see, well, the radio's off, the lights are off, what's using power? And I realized there was the, uh, front um, you know inverter so it's really good information to see and we've got uh, yeah all your switching there so you can get it scroll up and down so there's the pumps on the fridge is on um, the, all the lights are on and I can turn these lights on and off from from the switching here and you know all the electronics in there the other thing is we've got an app on your phone. Now, there we go. So you can see there, I can see mirror, basically it's a reflection of what's on here on your phone. And um, I can turn the light off and on. So you can have a look up, up on here. Right, lights are off, say you're in bed, you want to turn the lights off and on. You can just do that from your phone, okay. Um, you might be sitting around the campfire and you want to turn the radio off, you want to uh, turn the lights on, you want to turn the pump off, whatever. You can do it from your phone. So that's a nice little feature. It's not necessary, you don't have to get the app, but it's a feature there if you wanted to use it. And for a lot of people, I mean, if you're going to have all this information, it's nice to have the app as well. Okay, so we're going to look inside the trailer. Here's the uh, kitchen. Okay, you can see how I'm pulling the kitchen out as well. I'm doing all this before all the weights on the end, so it's quite light here. Get your legs nice and set. Okay, make sure the legs are locked in place. And I pull it out, drops down like that. Now, I'm just a little bit uneven there. A couple of things you can do, you can level up the trailer. You can level up the kitchen with the adjustable legs, but you've also got some blocks like this. And quite handy to use these, right? Look at that. So I don't need to worry about adjusting the leg, I can just use these blocks. And we chuck a couple of those in, um, which is quite handy to use. Standard on the trailer now is a 60 litre Evercool fridge. Australia made, company from Brisbane. It's a fridge freezer, and uh, these are an awesome bit of kit. So the good thing with the Evercool, besides the Australian company, and Australia made is it's the uh, perfect fit for the trailers. There's no other fridge available really that's just the right shape. So we've been able to go now to the 60 litre Evercool 
Okay, what you, you're losing the drawers in the middle of the kitchen, which we've always had, and we've decided recently it's better to have the option of a 60 fridge standard, and we've got the drawers here anyway, so that's uh, something that we're, we're doing now. Uh, you've got area for your stove here, and the kitchen comes with a couple of red tubs. The stove's not included at the moment because there's so many different stoves you can have. We've got options of the red stove, the gas one, or you can go the metho now. The metho's becoming quite popular because you don't need to hook up the gas. So you can get a metho stove as well. Storage in here, sink and pump, hook a hose from there up to the, uh, to the outlet, and you've got water for your kitchen. <clears throat> also the little folding end. We're making this a standard kitchen on this, on this trailer, which is the DPO fridge box version, the 60 fridge. And we've got now the uh, IGT brackets here, and we're we combining the kitchen with the iron grill table, so that gives you so many options with your kitchen, and I'll show you that in a sec. The iron grill table sections are not included in the price, um, because there's so many different options you might want to get, and some people might already have some of that, but that's designed to hook on here, and yeah, we'll show you. Storage box here. Okay, so that's basically an 1800 high storage box. Uh, all your gears in there, we've got a pole box here as well. We've got the uh, drawers on the front. So that's basically your kitchen pantry drawers. And you can pull that out, all right. You can see that we're just counterbalancing on the back of the trailer, okay. You don't want to pull it all the way out. We do have a stopper kit now to stop it coming right out. Um, but that's about as far as you need to pull it out. So you don't need to pull it any further. You can access your gear. There is legs underneath here you can use if you want, but generally there's no point. You know, it's a pain having to use them, and you just use it like that. So pull it out just as much as you need to, so you can grab what you need. Poles are all here. And you can leave it sitting there, which gives you bench space there as well. We've got a meter by 500 mils of bench space here for the kitchen. We've got your bench space on here. You've got your kitchen here, and then we'll have all the iron grill table set up here. So it's a very good setup kitchen, really practical and really nice to use. Dot six fridge box kitchen, IGT bracket, black stainless look, storage box with front drawers and the pole cradle, uh, storage box, fridge, come standard with that, and two red tubs. And there's also the option of, I haven't got it in here at the moment, of, a, of one of our drifter camping tables that uh, slides in and fits here. So that's an option you can get as well. Now it's a new um, hard top rooftop tent. So the size 2250 by 1600 wide, 300 mils high. Come in here, Jake, and you can that way. It's a 190 mil foam mattress. Now that's the thickness of your mattress right there. Okay. So 190 mils. It's an Australian made mattress made in Brisbane. There's an eggshell topper they call it, which is sort of eggshell type um, on the top, and they are super comfortable. So. I don't think anyone's ever done a 190 mil mattress in a rooftop tent before. Really nice and thick and comfortable. It's a queen size mattress as well, so it's a full queen. So it's just a real luxury to be able to sleep on that. Generally rooftop tents have got, you know, around 60, 80 mils on a, on, on a mattress. So it's really nice to have that. We've got lights with, there's eight lights associated with this hard shell rooftop tent. Here's some here. I've got, the, got them turned off with the TVMS, but there's lights here. There's a light inside, there's two reading lights, there's a light at the back of the tent over your kitchen. There's twin SIG plugs, we'll have a look in a sec. Uh, the front awning, and uh, there's also a SIG plug at the back here. All right, a little SIG plug there. We use that to, for um, hooking up some uh, portable LED lights under your awning. So we've got power at the back. There's also power here, but that just saves a power cord flapping around in this area. Also a fan, we'll show you inside in a sec. We've got the 270 degree square back 2.5 metre awning, which is here. It's mounted, it's, it's not on the actuators, we're not doing the actuators on these anymore. It's pretty good height as it is. We can lift that up very easily if we need to, just by lifting each side with a pin. So this is um, adjustable. Okay, you can see that. So we can lift that up and down and get that the height what we want. We'll set it up in a sec. Includes walls one, two, five, and six. So the walls are five and six at the back, one and two here. Uh, so you can close this area in. There's a door here. 
and uh, the only wall not included is the wall across here which is wall 7 so you can option that if you like I'll show you that in a sec as well we're chucking in a uh, jerry can a couple of jerry cans a uh, can of touch up paint small fire extinguisher and a spare set of Japanese made bearings to suit the trailer so there's always a spare set of bearings in there okay so I'll quickly talk about the optional extras uh, the solar panels on top are an extra as well. We might pop this. Do you want to jump up here, Jake? Okay, here we are. So there's 300 watts, two 150 watt uh, solar panels. They're wired up permanently, fixed there all the time, and that's a great system. So generally what you want to do is try to get your trailer, the back of the trailer, pointing north, and these things are just going to pump heaps of power out all day. So they're fixed on, now these are, are not included in the price because not everybody wants solar. Some people might want to put a kayak, a kayak up there. We can put tie rails on the top, kayaks, wags, Oz tent, whatever you like. So these uh, solar panels are, are an extra. They're on the uh, spec sheet. Upgrade to a lithium battery. Yeah, here it is, 1150. So that's the price to upgrade to the lithium battery. It's an extra 1150. Normally these batteries are about $1,700, $1,800, but we've already included the two AGM batteries, so we're taking those out and giving you a credit, charging you $11.50. Upgrade 17 inch tyres, you can do that, extra 220 bucks. Uh, the wall 7, now that's 590 bucks for one wall, but it's got a door and a window in it, and putting doors and windows in, in an awning wall is, is a lot of work, that's why it's, it's that expensive. You've got the option for an ISI bike carrier, the 2 or the 4, there's a bracket on the front here, okay, and it comes up over this area here, so it's a bit of a squeeze. All right, a lot going on up the front here, but you can get those if you like. You're going to lose the bag. Red Arc, Red Vision, the TVMS system. So that's listed here at 690 as uh, as an extra. But for the moment, at the moment at least, as of the end of May 2018, we're including that in there for free. Uh, you can get a pure sine wave, the, the inverter, the pure sine wave 700 watt inverters, uh, 750, and that's it. So they're pretty much the extras that you can get. For your vehicle, we've got on here a tow pro brake controller. You need a tow pro on your trailer. We haven't priced that up because we need to inv individually price that on your trailer. And our 12 volt guys would do that if you wanted that fitted. When you come to Drifter to pick up your trailer, we can fit that for you, but we need to price that separately. Also, you need an Anderson plug, so um, we can do that as well. Okay, so um, also on the front here, I'll show you is this is new with the front step we've made that a little bit higher okay to get us up a bit higher and we put this uh, marine rubber matting on top just so you're getting out to go to the toilet at night this is not cold on your feet and it's also non-slip so it's non-slip here and non-slip here and uh, we've got the step so I'll show you how that step works we'll jump up and open up the tent So as you can see, there's two boxes on the front. One lifts off very easy. This one here is fixed, okay? Both these boxes are um, basically tool boxes. All right, so you can see in there I've got bits and pieces. Very handy, I've got some grease and a water funnel and all sorts of bits and pieces. So just my little spares kit, okay? Little canvas cover over the top. All right, pretty simple. In this one here, have a look at this. You got a second one, and in that it's my charcoal box. So, you know, I've got enough for several meals in there. Charcoal's a go these days. Uh, if you're travelling out back, sometimes firewood's hard to find, you know. And um, having charcoal like that is a great way of cooking. It means you can store quite a lot of um, fuel very easily and, and safely. So I don't need this anymore. The ensuite, I missed that somehow, but that's on there as well. So what we've got is, better come around here and have a look, Jake. Um, this piece here is a little gutter, okay, so fixed aluminium gutter with a, a, a spout on it. That's gonna catch the water that goes between the awning and, and the rooftop tent. So if any water comes down here, of course, it'll collect in here, drop down here, you can put a hose on that to drop to the ground or a bucket, 
that runs right along the back. In the back here, we've got a bit of angle iron, so that's going to catch the drips and some of the rain that comes in off the rooftop tent. So if it's a lot of condensation at night, that's going to catch just the drips when it's uh, mounted up. And this one here is sail track, so we've got a gutter that pulls into the sail track and hooks onto the awning and completely protects this area here when it's raining. So if it's raining heavily, um, there will be no water that's going to drip onto your kitchen area. So that's the two sections that fixes that. We've got the little uh, mounted gutter here. Here's the ensuite here. Okay. And we put that on a gas strut, but we probably won't do that anymore. We're going to have a, a little piece that uh, hooks in to lock that in position. Uh, the problem with the gas strut, we thought it'd be good, but if you let that go, it's going to fling out and, you know, it will sort of probably break that, that gas strut. This is a little uh, ensuite. All right. These are so good, these. So, folds out very quick and easily. That's it there. We've got an extra zip we've put in ourselves. Okay, so we put this zip in um, to match because the zip here is just in the wrong spot. Shame they put it there, but we fix that by putting the zip there. And uh, you can see how windy it is. Okay, so I've just set up the, uh, the ensuite and also put a little hood on. So if you um, have a look in here, okay, we've got a little fiberglass rod and uh, which supports the roof and just um, covers that in. So it makes that really cosy in there, you know, fully protected. Also, you don't have to worry about people with drones flying overhead in campgrounds, things like that. And uh, really nice setup. The Joker's right here. We've got three hoses, one for gas, one for hot water and one goes back to the water tank. So very easy clip-on fittings, and that does uh, your shower. Something else I forgot to mention is this uh, little, we're calling it a charcoal box. Okay, because we've mounted the gas bottle on the front there, we've got space at the back here. And I've just got a bag of charcoal in there, also some straps, and it's just a handy little box for chucking whatever you like. I'm calling that the charcoal box, and that'll be an extra also. On the side here we've got some sail track, which, in, which is uh, for a, a tarp that comes out. So um, on some setup photos, we'll put that at the end, Jake. Some photos, we won't set up now, but it comes out here with some poles and down, or you can have it right out, and that provides some shade and shelter. On this side of the trailer, if you want to put chair and table around here and have a cup of tea, or you want to have some shaded section for the, uh, for the ensuite, you can just slide that sail track canvas in, so that's included as well. What we're going to do as well, this is just like a spec sheet video, in case it explains what we're doing on the spec sheet, what's included and what's not. We'll do some more videos very soon that will show you how to set up this trailer. We'll set everything up by myself, nice and easy, you know, just fully open everything up so it's all working and being used and then we'll close it all up as well so you can see how you'd use the trailer. All right, let's jump up top and we can show you the tent. As you can see, we've got our walk-up design, okay? That was a big feature of our design, is having the walk-up um, design. And that means it's just so easy to get up and down onto, you know, access into the tent. So, you know, almost anybody can do that. Just, you know, four steps or so. We've got lock lockable... Um, key on these uh, latches. It's important to keep that locked, okay, so you don't want that opening up on you. And basically, lift it up. We've got some poles and a pole bag inside. Okay, there's three poles and a spreader bar, and we're going to use those for the awning. So the trick here is just get your two spreader bars and your poles, hook that in there. Okay, you see I've got a spreader bar 
and I've put a um, I've got a wing nut to go on top. All right, you've got a nice platform here which you can stand on. All right, just put that wing nut on top. Just a couple of turns, just so that can't blow off. So once you got your two poles on, push the spreader bar out. And you can adjust these here as well. They don't need much. We want these about level. And that's it. You can see too, we can quite easily reach those. If it's really windy, you can put a rope on each of these poles down to your drawbar, hold that nice and secure. But it can't really go anywhere. Okay? If it's windy, you put the ropes down. If not, you don't really need anything. Okay, so if you're getting up and down the tent at night, you can have your, there's a switch here, you can use for your LED lights. Good idea to leave these on at night time, so you've got a little bit of light all around the trailer. Also covers you when you're getting up and down in the trailer, so that's quite good. And there's a switch here, which turns the LED light on inside the tent. So, the tents are always dark when you go to get in. You can see that, and there's a switch here, you can turn that on straight away. And you can turn that off inside there. Okay, now... We'll jump inside and have a look. Some people have asked about do we have a boot shelf and uh, you don't really need one because that's your boot shelf there. Plenty of room for to put your shoes there before you jump in. And look at that, I mean we are just inside the tent. Right, eh? Nice foam, non-slip grip, down to canvas, onto a, can can onto a carpet step, down in onto our carpet box. You know, so, so easy. You've got this as a handle. One thing we're doing, there will be a handle here as well. And look at that, straight in. So that's so easy. Let's crawl inside and have a look. So, you can see here, queen size Australian made eggshell foam topper, queen size mattress, 190 mil thick, and fits in there perfectly. So you can get a sheet put over that Got me Snow Peak down sleeping bag. It's been pretty cold here lately. We've been camping at the fan event and everything. Got some nice pockets up here. All right, these are on sail track, so you could, in fact, pull these out and put, you know, a different style of pocket in if you really wanted to. We've got the LED light there, uh, white light or orange. So that's pretty good. It's not too bright, Jake. On the top here we've got this little Sirocco fan. Oh mate, these are so good. Hook it like that. We can adjust the, um, it can swing anyway. See that? And uh, you can turn it on off here. So imagine you're up in Queensland, stinking hot weather, Christmas time, and you know, you've got a beautiful little fan on, blowing on you all the time. You can direction that any way you want. And that is great, very quiet. You can move that any way you want, so really good. Up the back here, we've got a 300mm headboard, all right, some stem, leading, stem reading lights. 300mm get up high over your pillow, and, uh, and you've also got a little uh, headboard storage. So inside that is all storage for books, magazines, whatever you want to put in there. And now if you're really tall, I mean I'm six foot, Jacob, if he's sleeping in here, probably his feet would extend onto this area. So sometimes a queen size standard bed is not long enough for people, um, but this gives you a little bit extra room as well to extend out. You could put your pillow on there and you've got that little bit extra room. So the headboard does create more room for those really tall people. Reading lights are great. Just press the button on and off LED. Now the other thing as well, you can see, um, this is about the extra height you have inside the tent for putting pillows and bits and pieces. So all of your bedding, your two, four pillows, um, doona, sleeping bags will all fit inside. You can leave them in here. So we've also got twin USB sockets. Okay, so there's four USB sockets and two SIG plugs in here. Heaps of power, charge your phone and all that sort of stuff. And we've got the nice windows either side. YKK zips. We've also got the ability to 
open the window right up. Okay, so you can open everything right up. And uh, we've got, importantly as well, coverage over the windows here. So if it's raining at the moment, you're gonna basically be able to leave these windows open and um, still get some airflow, which is very important. The tent's made in Australia as well. So we get Jason from Crazy Dog Canvas up in Maryborough who uh, makes the tent. And it's all made out of Australian 12 ounce canvas. So 12 ounce canvas is very important because it's a lot thicker than normal rooftop tents and gives a lot of um, extra um, strength in the walls, which keeps it, uh, or just thicker walls, so it's warmer in winter and a lot cooler in summer as well. Also, some rooftop tents, very thin walls, you'll just get, uh, um, you know, the light will just shine through, but this is the thicker canvas. It's pitch black in here if the sun's up, so it's nice. Also a little uh, vent up the top. Okay, that's on some Velcro. So you can unzip that and roll it up, give you a little bit extra airflow at the top. So as the fan's on, sucking cool air straight through there. It's very nice. On the door, <coughs> okay, you can clip that open as you can see, but there's a door and also midgy mess. Very good quality midgy mess. And also, We've got, got it set up so it's a D shaped on the door. So you can get in and out of the, uh, of the door without it all falling on top of you. Nothing worse in a rooftop tent than the door falling all over you as you're trying to get in and out. And also some of them, the door falls down over this area at your feet on, over the ladder and uh, gets in your road. So it's much better to have a door this way. <clears throat> a couple of pockets here on the side. I think that's it. Oh yeah, we've got a lined headboard or the top board, we're calling it. In behind that is air cell insulation, so it's fully insulated behind that. And also the solar panel is going to suck a lot of hot air out of the sun as well. So it's going to be uh, an insulated uh, roof on this. And um, normally in a canvas tent, you don't have any insulation. Maybe you've got a fly, but uh, it's going to be a lot cooler inside here with the insulated roof. And you've got big windows either side. All right, I think that's all in here. <coughs> Look at that, so comfortable. All right. That is just the best spot to uh, sit and have a beer, cup of tea in the morning, Look at that, that is just, that's Ripper. Wish I had a beer right now, that'd be perfect. So, yeah, I think that sort of covers the spec sheet really. Lots of uh, storage in here. I won't open the awning up right now. We've shown you the awning many times and we'll show it again soon on the uh, setup videos, but that's a 270 square back awning. Covers all this area right around the back of the kitchen. I might just quickly set up the uh, iron grill table so you can check that out. Right, so quickly set up the iron grill table. This section is not included, but it's very easy to buy. It's on our website, and we can talk you through what works for you. But basically, it's a frame like this. That's the IGT3 from Snow Peak, and the extension bench. Also got a couple of the uh, IGT connectors here. Uh, set on there. We get a couple of legs and this is how easy it is to set this up. Okay, We've got two different heights here on the IGT connector. We've just got two of those screwed on so you've got a, a few options of two heights. That's it there. Now I can put two more legs on Such an ingenious system, this iron grill table. Now that, very quick and easy. Now what that gives me is lots of options for cooking and your kitchen. So here's my double barbecue box. This is all 
None of this is included in the price, but you can select this if you like. Here's my double barbecue box for charcoal. And here I've got a single box with some kitchen gear inside it. It'll fit in there. All right, so I've got like storage there. I can hook this on the end here. And I've got a half box, a hook in there. All right, so I've got cups and cutlery and whatever in there. And I can also do, if I wanted to, a chopboard will fit into that section. Um, I've got all my preparation space. I've got a windshield for that. I've got my gas stove here. All right, so the gas stove's there, hooks up to the gas bottle. I can bring this gas stove and put it here as well if I like. And uh, just gives me so many different cooking options. I've got some drop legs as well I can use. Okay, two of these. You put that in there and a 600 mil leg and this bench will drop down to a chair sitting height so that's another option we have as well so that's the reason we like the angled table because it gives so many cooking options and uh, combines really well with the drifter kitchen so it's really cool that we've been able to incorporate these two great designs and that's something that you can put on the walk-up hardtop trailer Okay, so there you can see I've sat this angle table bench down on the adjusters and the 600 legs and it gives me now a sitting height. So you can see there, pretty good little setup. Solar panels, a new rooftop tent, the trailer, airbag suspension. Pretty much everything you can need. There's nothing else that we can think of that you'll need on a camping four drive traveling touring trip that's not in this trailer. Beautiful kitchen setup, stove, fridge, storage box. Now with the angle table, we've got our tucker box over here and that's a pretty good setup. Thanks very much.